Hello there. Today's story happened many, many years ago, when the world was a totally different place. My name is Gwen Rajibadi, and the story for today is titled, A Man Amongst Men and the Forest Giant. A very long time ago, there lived a strong man. His name was Haruna. Haruna was a very proud man. So proud that whenever he comes back home from hunting, he will throw on the floor whatever he's going to hunt for today and scream to himself, I am a man amongst men. Then his loving wife, Zahara, would always smile from inside and come and say, Ah, uh ah, -uh, now, stop. Stop saying you're a man amongst men. If you see a man amongst men, you will run away. Run as fast as your leg can carry you. But he will always reply, that is not true. There is no one stronger than me. So this happened without fail, every day, day after day. There had been no rain for some time. So the stream near their house was almost dry. Now these days, Zahara would have to walk further and further down in search of water. On this fateful day, after walking a very long distance, she came to a well she had never visited before. Then she noticed the well bucket was a little bit bigger than the usual ones. She now thought to herself, hmm, this well bucket will take about 10 men to pull up out of the well. Without attempting to lift the bucket, very unhappy because of course she knew that the well was full with water, she returned back home. Her calabash was completely dry. A little while passed when Zahara met another woman on the same path. Now, this woman had a child that would be, say, about two years old. The woman saw Zahara and greeted her and said, Ah, where are you going with your calabash? that has no water inside when there's a full well just up the road. Zahara replied politely, Ah, I've been to the well, but the bucket to draw the water is so big that it will need about 10 men to pull it up. Let us return to the well so you can fetch the water. My son is here, he will help pull up the bucket, the woman said to Zahara kindly. So they returned together to the well, and all the while, Zahara was wondering how this two-year-old baby boy would be able to lift the large bucket empty, let alone when it was filled up with water. On reaching the well, the woman told her son to pick up the bucket and pull up the water from the well. Without saying a word, the boy went to the well and drew up water, enough water for them to wash their clothes, they took their bath, they filled up their calabashes, and then they headed home. Now, Zahara was astonished and the boy's strength, but she made no comment. You know, for a while, they shared the same path, chatting happily until the woman said goodbye to Zahara. For a while, they shared the same path, you know, chatting happily until the woman had to say goodbye to Zahara. Has she and the boy turned off the path and entered the forest? Zahara was so scared, she asked, where are you going? The woman now said, I'm going home, where else? Zara asked again, is that the way to your home? The woman replied, yes. <laughs> and who is the man of the house? Whose home is it? You know, all these questions were questions that I was asking because she was confused. The woman replied, it is the home of a man amongst men. Zahara was silent. She simply waved and said goodbye. It wasn't too long after Zahara reached the house that Haruna came busting through the door and shouting, I am the man amongst men! Then again, as usual, she reminded him that quite possibly not. You know, then she told him all that happened earlier on that day. Haruna getting angry stood up and said, Tomorrow, you must take me to that well! So they ate and slept early. The next morning, Haruna was the first to get up from sleep. He took his hunting weapons even before he woke his wife, put them over his shoulder. Then he went to his wife. Get up! Let us go! Take me to that well! I must see the man amongst men! 
you know. <laughs> After a while, while walking, just as they were about sitting down to rest, they saw the woman and her son approaching. Now, the two women greeted each other joyfully, you know. A moment even passed, then Zahara now asked Haruna to help them fetch water. Uh, my husband, please help us drop the bucket into the well and draw water for us. So Haruna with his chest bulging with pride, wanting to impress all the ladies. He had great difficulty, you know, even trying to lift the bucket and letting it down into the well. But as it filled up with water, the weight of the bucket almost pulled him in. Now, if truth be told, Haruna would have fallen into the well if not the little boy that seized him and the bucket and dragged them back out again. When he was satisfied and Haruna was safe, the baby boy now lifted up the bucket, put it into the well, drew up water, and filled up all their water pots. At this point, Zahara was getting worried. So she now said, Ah, my husband, no. she, you want to go and see the woman's husband, since you've already seen the strength of the son. Haruna and I replied, If you still want to go, you can go on your own. As for me, I am not going. So, the boy's mother on the other side now heard the concern in Zahara's voice, and I came and said, Ah, oh, my sister, what's the matter? She questioned. Haruna now answered for his wife and said, I wish to see your husband. The woman now said, Ah, oh girl, that's not advisable, though. But Haruna was insistent. The woman now responded, Okay, well, if you are certain, let's be on our way. Now, with that, all of them, apart from Zahara, began the long walk to the home of the man. A man amongst the men. Finally, they arrived at the house. So the woman now said, Ah, I'll go in luck, oh. A man amongst men has gone to the forest to go and hunt. She now showed Haruna a good place to hide. A small out hut that sometimes they used to store meat. Haruna hid himself as best as he could. He sat quietly in his hiding place up until the sky and all was dark. Now, the master of the house had returned back home. He was hardly through the door when he growled in a loud voice, I smell the smell of a man. His wife said meekly, oh, there's, there's, there's no one here. It's just, it's just me and your son. And your son. If, if, if you want to eat us up, it's all good, but there's no one else in the house. Haruna, from where he was, he could see everything. He was a huge man, equally a huge voice. Haruna realized immediately he had made a huge mistake by insisting on following the woman back home. At this point, Haruna was trembling as he observed. He said to himself, this is a man that can eat 10 elephants at one time. This man, was the real man amongst men. Haruna remained in the storehouse for what seemed like eternity, because to him it felt like a very, very long time. He was very, very scared, and he remembered all of a sudden the advice the woman had given him. You must not move till he is asleep. If the room is dark, He's not asleep. If you see the room is light, that is a sign that he's asleep. Come out and run home as fast as you can. At long last, in an instant, the room became light. Almost as if it was daytime. Now, Haruna wasted no time at all. He came out of his hiding place, took to his heels, mm, 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 with the speed of a cheetah. <laughs> <laughs> I smell the smell of a man. I smell the smell of a man. He roared so loud that even the birds in the trees took flight. He now followed Haruna's scent. Of course, he knew exactly what path 
to take. He was in hot pursuit. Now, Harun on the other side was running, running, and finally stopped only when he came across some farmers who were clearing one part of the land that they wanted to plant here. They saw Harun and asked, What's the problem? Harun and I replied, I am being chased by a man amongst men. He managed with his breath and trying to say what he was trying to say. There is safety in numbers, one farmer said. Stay here with us until he comes, another suggested. Now, with the speed of a man amongst men, it took only a short time before a strong gusting wind was felt. The wind was kicking up against the dust. The trees were bending. Even the farmers and Harun were in danger of being lifted off the ground and thrown in mid-air. One of the farmers now shouted, What is this? Because he was desperate for his voice to be heard across the gale. Now Harun now shouted back, This is the wind of a man amongst men makes while he's running. Because of his eyes, he's not even here yet. If you guys know, you can protect me, say so now before he's too late. So now, the farmers in unity now said, Pass on, Haruna! Pass on! With the whole confusion, Haruna now took his shoes. Mm! Took to his heels again. <laughs> Haruna ran and ran. And ran. He even ran past a well despite the fact that he was thirsty. He didn't even stop to drink. Even though his mouth was dry and his tongue was swollen, he kept running. Running. He was so scared that he didn't stop even once. Up until he came to a giant who was sitting alone in a baobab tree. Now, this giant was a man that can eat 20 elephants at one time. Harunan could not believe his eyes. Then the giant slowly looked up at Haruna, who was now seeing this giant in complete shock. Why all this haste? Where do you go in such a hurry on such a beautiful day? Harunana replied, bleated like a sheep. <laughs> a man amongst men is chasing me. I am the forest giant. Come and sit next to me and let's stay here till he comes. Haruna, scared out of his skin, did exactly as the giant ordered. After a short while, the hurricane made by the man amongst men began. Now, with his usual force, it lifted Haruna from where he was seated, right beside the forest giant. Haruna, absolutely petrified. He was about to run again when the forest giant shouted at him to come back. Haruna and I exclaimed, ah, this wind will lift me in the air and cast me back down. Then the forest giant flew in into rage, got up, caught Haruna by the hand and placed him under the tie so he can stop Haruna from flying up into the sky. Now, this is how the sats up until the man amongst men came upon them. The man amongst men now came to them and said, You sitting down there, are you of the living or of the dead? The forest giant now replied, You are interfering. The man amongst men looked at them and said, if you want to find health, give up to me what you have there. With that, a man amongst men flew into a temper. He sprang up, seized the forest giant, and they started wrestling together. First of all, they wrestled all the way this way, and they wrestled that way. Neither of them ready to concede defeat. Finally, after a long while, their bodies now twisted around each other. The two of them going all the way and leapt up into the heavens. Even now, 
centuries after they are still fighting each other at that same spot when they are tired they sit down and rest and then rise up again to fight and that is the thunder we hear in the sky today so Haruna had used the two fighting as his opportunity to escape as soon as he reached his house he told Zahara and the entire village a tale of his story when he finished his story, Zahara and I came to Haruna and said, Husband, husband, this is what I've always told you. Whatever you do, make little of it. <laughs> the moral of the story is, whether you are outstandingly physically strong or you're in power, perhaps the king of a vast nation, or you're extremely rich. It's all the same. If you are bloated with pride, you'll find that someone who is much, much stronger than you, much, much more powerful than you, much, much more better off than you. My name is Mira Ajibade. Just nice doing business with you. <laughs>